Imagine if you graduate, you do not have to go out to employers, you do not have to hand in your CV, go for interviews, but employers will be there lining up just because they want to hire you for their company. How many would like to have that in your life? Hello everyone, good morning. good morning! Love your energy, one more time, good morning everyone! Good morning. First of all, uh, I would like to thank you M for inviting me here today and also um, give yourself a round of applause for being here. And what I would like you to do right now is that I would like to congratulate you because you, have, you can spend your time going to other places but you choose to be here today. So congratulations. <laughs> and also I would like you to turn to your partner to your left and to your right, give them a high five and say let's have fun today. Now, allow me to introduce myself again. My name is Shuyi. I'm the co-founder of Growth Achievers. So let me ask you this question. How many of you here would like to achieve more success in your life? Raise up your hand. Good. And how many of you here would like to have more income in your life? Raise up your hand and say aye. Aye. Awesome. So for today is about branding yourself. How many of you realize that you actually have a brand inside you? A lot of people don't actually realize that, but we all have a brand inside us. So for today, by the end of this presentation, we are going to discover three things, all right? So the first thing is that how to build a powerful personal brand and attract employees to hire you without you going up to them. Imagine this, imagine if you graduate, you do not have to go out to employers, you do not have to hand in your CV, go for interviews, but employers will be there lining up just because they want to hire you for their company. How many would like to have that in your life? Okay, so the second thing that we're going to go through is that how anyone can become the figure of authority even if you have no experience or zero talent which means that I believe that every one of us here can become the expert in our field and in your field is accounting. All of us here can become the expert in your field. So this applies to each and every one of you. Even though you think that you do not have talent, even though you think that you are an introvert, you do not know how to talk to people, but throughout this presentation, I'm going to show you that you have the talent in you and there's a strategy for you to achieve what you want for people to see you as a somebody that's the second thing that we're going to go through all right and the final thing that we are going to go through is that how to stand out from your peers and become the best performing employees in your organization which means that we are going to teach you some of the strategies for you to brand yourself so that you can perform at your very best every single day and how many of you agree that if you can perform at your very best every single day, it will be good for you because your pay will rise, right? And people will like you, people will trust you just because you are the best performing employee. So we are going to go through that, right? Now, throughout this workshop, I'd just like to share with you the workshop that we have done, we always have these three types of people that attend to our workshop. How many types of people? Three. Three, right. So the first type of people, we call it super learners. Everyone say super learners. Super learners. Now what does super learners do? Super learners, they have this mindset that says it will work. So whatever you tell them, they will just have this mindset that says it will work and they are open to learnings. That's the first people that we have in our workshop. Now. The second type of people is what we call the tourists. Everyone say tourists. Tourists. What does a tourist do? Travel. Travel. They see here, look here, right? 
So usually when tourists come to our workshop, they have this mindset that says, I will try and I will see. So the problem is that they will only try something if something is convenient for them, if something is comfortable for them. But let me ask you this, at the end of the day, will they learn something out from those workshops? Yes or no? Yes. yes, but a little bit, not a lot, right? All right. So the third type of people is what we call prisoners of workshop. Everyone says prisoners of workshop. Prisoners of workshop. Now, prisoners of workshop, usually they have this mindset that says it won't work. And usually this type of people, they do not want to be in the workshop. And they only have two questions to ask me usually. And the question is, Shui, what time break? Huh? Shui, what time this session ends? Yeah? So I believe that over here, no one is a prisoner of workshop, right? Yes. Okay, so where do you think you are? Which one do you think you are right now? Yes. Some of you tourists, some of you super learners. Okay, so for this one hour, is it okay for me to invite all of you here to be super learners and let's learn together? Is that okay? Yes. Is that okay, everyone? Yes. Alright, so what is a personal brand and why does it matter? Now, how many of you realize that we all carry a brand in us? So what does personal brand mean is that a personal brand represents yourself, which means you are your own personal brand, right? So why does it matter? In sales, in selling, we all need a personal brand. Whether you are going to interview for a job, whether you are presenting yourself to other people, we all need certain personal brand inside us. And personal brand is actually who we are as a person. Now you might think, Shui, I think that I do not want to be in the industry of sales, which means that I don't want to be selling. So why should I build my own personal brand? But the truth is, like it or not, we are all in the industry of sales which means that we are either selling a product a service or an idea the idea of why should they hire you that's one part of personal brand so why is it important is because if you want to get a high paying job if you want to get people to like you get employers to trust you you need to first build your own personal brand and that goes, to, that goes to same to every one of you here. All good so far? Yes. All right? Now, moving on. What brand do you represent? Now, I want to ask you here. Do you want to be a Ferrari or do you want to be a... My V. My v. <laughs> All of you here want to be a My V. Yes. Why? <laughs> Can fly. Awesome. But let me ask you this. A Ferrari and a Myvi, which one has a higher value? <laughs> which one is more expensive? <laughs> Are you guys sure it's Myvi? Okay. So if Myvi is your personal brand, and if your personal brand is about sustainability, that is good right that is good but if you want to position yourself as the expensive one if you want to position yourself with the car that has the highest value which is the most expensive car then Ferrari could be your choice but I leave this up to you because whether it is a Ferrari or a Myvi you must first be clear on what brand do you represent because there's nothing wrong of being a Ferrari or being a Myvi but you need to understand this which one do you want to choose and why do you want to choose this brand alright now moving on did you know that there's 15 companies that no longer has no longer requires a degree for them to interview people which means that when they interview people they do not look at the results so what does it tell us here it tells us that results I'm not saying that results are not important, but employers right now are not only looking at results. Now you may spend a lot of time focusing on getting good grades, focusing on getting A's in your exam, getting a GPA of 4.0 in your exam. But the truth is, 
These are not the only factors that employers will actually hire you. And we were all conditioned in a way that says, when we go to school, we must study hard. And the reason why we must study hard is because we want to get a good grade. And because we want to get a good grade, we will get hired, we will get a good job. And because of this job, we will get a lot of salary. But that is not true right now. It may be true 10 years ago, but it is not true right now. And some of the companies who doesn't really use CV to hire people are big companies like Google, Apple, EY in England, and also Starbucks. They no longer see your results to determine whether you are the good fit for the company. What they look at is actually your personal brand. Who are you at the person? Who are you as a person and what values that you can bring to the table? How can you provide? How can you contribute to their company? So that is what they are looking at right now. Your attitude, your beliefs, your values. So they do not only look at results. I'm not saying that results are not important. Results are still important, but they do not look at results only. They look at a lot of different factors. And one of it is your personal brand, all right? Now moving on, Malaysia aims to produce 60,000 accountants by 2020, which is this year. Imagine this guys, 60,000 accountants. How many of you here, I'm just wondering, want to be an accountant? <laughs> Am I at the right event? Huh? <laughs> Who here wants to be an accountant? Let's be honest. Right, good. Now, 60,000 people want to be an accountant in Malaysia. Now, if you really think about it, when you graduate, you are actually competing with 60,000 people for a job. How likely you are going to get a job? And my question to you is, what differentiates you from other people who are actually competing for the same job? So here's why building a personal brand is important. You need to understand that in order for you to differentiate yourself from your competitors, from your peers, so that you get a job, is by building your personal brand because that will separate you from the rest of your peers and that will allow employers to look at you and to give you a higher salary right and the benefits of personal branding number one you will get your employers to know you to respect you and to trust you because if they don't know you if they don't respect you and if they don't trust you they won't hire you Okay, so that's the benefit of having a personal brand. And a personal brand will increase your perceived values. How many of you realize that we actually have our own perceived values? We all have a value inside us. And the question I want you to know is, sorry, the question I want you to ask yourself is, how much are you worth? If your worth is 3K, if you think that employers should pay you 3K, why is it 3K? Or if you think that you can actually bring in profit of 5K, then employers should hire you for 5K. So you need to ask yourself, what is the value that you can bring to your table? And that is your perceived values, right? So the second thing is that once you have a very strong personal brand, you now have, to, you now have the power to actually demand for higher salary, which means that no, you no longer need to listen to your employer. If your employer offers you 3K, you accept with 3K. You no longer need to do that because once you have a strong personal brand, you will be able to actually demand salary and you'll be able to justify it with your own personal brand. All right? And the third thing is that to grow your network and once you grow your network, you will attract the ideal opportunities for you in your life. Whether it's to get the promotion that you want, starting a business or getting a high paying job, all these opportunities will start coming into your life once you are able to build a personal brand. All right, all good so far? Yeah. Yes, okay. Now, moving on, let me ask you this. A doctor, when you go to see a doctor, right? How many of you ask for discount? Huh? Not really, right? Imagine this, when you go, when you're sick and you go to the doctor and you say, doctor, I'm sick, I, I want this medicine, can you give me a 50% discount? What do you think of this doctor? not professional, maybe no quality, right? So, how does this apply to your life? Imagine this. 
Right now, you no longer need to settle for less. You no longer need to tolerate your salary because right now, the doctor can demand more is because the doctor is the expert in his field. The doctor knows his stuff. So what if you are able to be the expert in your field? What if you are able to know your stuff as well? So employers goes to you, you can demand for more. You can no longer settle for less. What if you are able to do that? Okay, so who here wants to be the doctor in your field? Raise out your hand. All right, but guess what? If you want to build your own personal brand, you need to talk to people. So how do you actually talk to people and how do you actually overcome this fear in public speaking? Now, here's something that I want to share with you. No one will ever celebrate you, respect you or trust you when you are a nobody. Which means that the first step that you need to do is that you must first see yourself as a somebody. Now you may ask me, Shui, right now I'm a nobody, how can I actually see myself as a somebody? But the truth is, you just need to believe that you are actually a somebody. When I first started speaking on stage, I was a nobody. I had this belief. I stand up on stage, I'm a nobody. Who, want, who would want to listen to me? But guess what? There are people who want to listen to you. But the first thing is that you must first see yourself as a somebody and you must first know that you have something to share that people would want to learn from. That's the first step. Now, moving on. How do you present yourself? It's very important for your personal brand. Because how people actually look at you will determine whether they want to do business with you, will determine whether they like you, or will determine whether they want to hire you. So you need to understand how do you actually present yourself in front of public every single day. Okay? And I'm going to share with you two strategies for you to overcome all your fears in public speaking in just two minutes. Two minutes. Who would like to learn that? So the first strategy is that you need to up your energy. Everyone says, up your energy. Up your energy. Now, up your energy means that every time you meet people, you need to have a high energy. But most people, we are conditioned to act in low energy. But let me ask you this. You see successful people, Steve Jobs, Richard Branson, Tony Fernandez, do they have high energy or low energy? But do you, know, do you guys know why most people have low energy? You see, the reason is because since young, we are conditioned to do this. You see, when the recess bells ring, recess is over, go back to class. What are you supposed to do? You are supposed to go back to class and what? And do what? Talk to your friends? You are supposed to go back to your class and sit down and then shut up, right? Yes, you are conditioned to be quiet every single time. And imagine this. If someone goes up to you and asks you how your day is, and if you reply like this, my day is very normal, very boring, and things are just like that. Long. And people will go like, I understand, I can feel you. <laughs> but think about it this way. If people ask you, how's your day, and you, you go like this, my day has been great, it's been amazing, I'm really grateful that I'm alive and a lot of things are working really well for me. What do you think that person will think of you? <laughs> Crazy fella. <laughs> right? But the truth is, is it wrong for you to be high energy? No. But why is it so that we all have low energy? It's because we want to gain acceptance. It's because we don't want to be different. That's why since young, we all have low energy. Even in lectures, why do you fall asleep in lectures? By the way, how many of you fall asleep in lecture? Why? It's because learning is not like this. Learning is not just about sitting down. So, right now, I'm going to teach you how you are able to create more energy inside you so that you'll be able to be more confident and you'll be able to attract more people. Do you want to learn this? Okay, so the second thing that you need to understand is your emotional state. Everyone say emotional state. Emotional state. Right. 
Now imagine this, if every single day of your life, you are able to be more focused, more determined, more confident, do you think you'll be able to achieve much more in your life? Yes. Right? So, how do you actually control your emotional state? A lot of us, we let emotions control us. We let fear come into us and a lot of times, we do not even feel confident. 70% of our thoughts are negative. Which means that everything that we think of, mostly 70% of them are negative. And I want to ask you this, if 70% of your thoughts are negative, how is it actually affecting your life? Right? So the way to increase your emotional state is actually by your body language. Everyone says body language. Body language. Now, body language, directing your body language. Imagine this. Imagine if you are confident, right? There are certain body language for you to be confident and for you to be depressed as well. Now let's try this out. Everyone here in 3, 2, 1, I would like you to feel depressed. 3, 2, 1, go! Feel depressed. Alright, now in 3, 2, 1, I want you to feel confident. Go! Alright, now let me ask you this. When you are confident, is your head held high or low? Is your shoulder upright or slouching? <laughs> and is when you are speaking, is your tone strong or weak? Strong. You see, 200 people or maybe 100 plus of people are in this room and you guys have the exact same strategy for you to be confident. So confidence is actually not a talent but it's a strategy. And the fastest way for you to be confident is actually to change the way you move your body, change your body language. And the power pose of success, if you are able to do this for just two minutes, it will increase your testosterone level by 20% and decrease your cortisol level by 25%, which means that testosterone level is directly related to our confidence level. And cortisol level is our stress level. And imagine by doing this for just two minutes, you are able to increase your confidence by 20% and decrease your fear by 25%. How powerful would that be? Even you do it before your interview, before you have an important meeting, before you are presenting something. Just do this for two minutes and you will see massive change in the confidence that you have. How powerful would that be? All right? So that's the first way. Now, moving on to the second P. The first P, we talk about it, is presence. The second P is about people. Now, what does people mean? It means that when you are building your personal brand, you need to meet different people. You need to be able to present yourself to different people. And you need to get people to like you, to trust you, and everything happens really quickly. It can happen within just one minute. And there's this, import, there's this very powerful fact that says people judge you within the first seven seconds they see you. You know people say, don't judge a book by its cover? That's wrong. Every one of us judge. <laughs> like it or not, consciously, unconsciously, every one of us judge. And the moment we see you for the first seven seconds, we will know whether we like you, whether we want to do business with you, or whether we want to be friends with you. Everything happens within the first seven seconds. And guess what? If you want to, if you make a first bad impression, you need eight consecutive good impressions to actually neutralize it. But the question you need to ask yourself is, how many chances do you have in your interview? Just one. You don't have eight chances to make a good impression. So you want to do the, you want to do it right at the first time, right? And. There's three ways to actually build your credibility so that the first seven second people actually see you, they like you, they will trust you and they will respect you. And the first way is this, you need to be sharp as tech. Everyone say sharp as tech. Sharp as tech. Imagine this, the first seven seconds, if someone sees you like this, do you think they will like you or trust you? So the first seven seconds, you need to be as confident as possible. And when you meet them, give them a firm handshake. And you guys just learn the strategy on how to be confident, right? So within the first seven seconds, you need to be sharp as tech. People want to see you as the figure of authority within the first seven seconds. Now, the second way for you to build trust with people is to create points of familiarity. Everyone says points of familiarity. Points of familiarity. 
Which means that people like people who are like themselves. You are now friends with the person beside you is because there's some way the fr your friends looks like you or behave like you or think like you. That's why you are friends with them. So in order for you to build trust with people is to create point of familiarity, which means that you need to create common topic for you guys to talk to. If that person that you talk to love football, then you talk more about football. If they love traveling, then you talk more about traveling. But the key is you need to know how to actually match that person's interest. You need to find out that person's interest and you need to talk based on that person's interest. Right? That's the second point. And the third point is that you need to make micro promises. Everyone says micro promises. Now what does micro promises mean? It means that when you talk to people, you can actually make little promises to make a good first impression. Whether it is networking event, whether it is normal conversation, you can actually make a micro promise to gain a better first impression. For example, if you are talking to a person and if you know that that person is into traveling, into food, what you can do is that you can say something like this. Hi mister, I know that um, you are actually interested in all these different cafes. So here's what I would like to, what I will do for you at the end of our meeting. So at the end of the meeting, later when I go back home, I will send you a list of my favorite cafe so that you will be able to go to it when you are free. That's how you actually make micro promises. Or imagine if someone likes traveling and you can tell them something like, so here's what I like you to what I like to do for you. Later when I go back, I'd like to go, uh, I'd like to search for all these different places in Japan that's really interesting, which I've been to before, and I'd like to send all of this to you so that it makes your life easier. These are all micro promises that will actually gain a first good impression for you and to build a powerful personal brand for you. All good so far? Yes? yes? Okay. Are you guys learning something so far? Yeah. Right? Now moving on, positioning. Now this is one of the key to building a pers powerful personal brand. It's through positioning yourself as the figure of authority, which means that the doctor in your field, the expert in your field. And how you are going to do that? Now think of it this way. Imagine this, if this person comes up to you and say, guys, you can do it. How do you feel? You are right, <laughs> right? But imagine this, if this person comes up to you and says, guys, you can do it. Which one feels more powerful? <laughs> Master Yoda, why? It's because he is being seen as the expert in his field. He is the master in his field. So you need to understand this in your industry. You do not need to be the best but you just need to be known as the best. Because if you are the best, if you cannot communicate to people that you are the best, people will not know you. People will not want to hire you. But you must be known as the best. People must know you as the best. And let me ask you this. What is the best fast food restaurant in the world? The first thing that comes to your mind. McD, all right. Now, second question. What is the best sports apparel brand? The first thing that comes to your mind. Nike, Adidas, right? And third thing, what is the best coffee brand in the world? Starbucks. Starbucks, right? Starbucks. But let me ask you this. Does McD actually produce the best hamburgers? Are their burgers better than McD? Yeah. Cheaper than McD? Yeah. Ramly burger. Yeah. Right. And Starbucks. Are there coffee that is way better, way cheaper than Starbucks? Yes. Then why is it that when we say the best brand, all these brands actually comes up to your mind? It's because of branding. And even though they are not the best, but they are being known as the best. People know them as the best. So my question to you is, when you talk about all this, all these brands comes up to your mind. But what about you yourself? What do you want to be remembered for? When people say your name, what is the first thing that comes up to people's mind? 
you need to identify that because once you are able to identify that the moment people say I want the best accountant then your name comes up to your mind I mean comes up to their mind or when people say I want the best audit person and your name comes up to their mind so you need to identify how do you actually position yourself as being the best in your field all good so far yes. all right now moving on you need to become the figure of authority and one of the way for you to be known as the doctor in your field is actually by creating content a lot of us here we consume content we consume content every single day on youtube on instagram we watch all this different content but if you want to be the expert in your field you must be the one producing the content you want you must be the one writing all these blog posts stop reading other people's blog posts because when you read other people's blog posts you think that they are the expert but what if you become an author yourself and by the way author comes from the word authority which means that when you're actually writing something sharing your point of view you are having authority people will see that you know your stuff okay so one of the most powerful way to build your brand is actually through LinkedIn how many of you here know what LinkedIn is all right how many of you here has a LinkedIn account okay not many but I want to share with you that the most powerful platform for you to build your personal brand is through LinkedIn because LinkedIn is the new Facebook for business and it's the digital CV that can gets you a job everyone who's in business every employers they are looking for candidates to hire on linkedin so if you really want to secure a job even before you graduate build up your linkedin profile now this was a post that i actually posted up on linkedin um, just last year when i graduated and imagine this this post actually generated me sixteen thousand views sixteen thousand now just think about it this way if only one percent of the employers are interested in you 162 employees are actually interested in you wanting to hire you for their company this is how you actually create demand for yourself and once you're able to create demand for yourself you are now able to demand for more you are now able to ask for a higher salary because everyone wants you and how you do it is by building your personal brand and there's a few ways for you to create content whether it's on Facebook whether it's on LinkedIn but what I found which is most effective which is to create content on LinkedIn and for those of you who have no idea what LinkedIn is all about go Google it up and just to share with you some of the content that you can create on LinkedIn the first one is that you can actually write an article on LinkedIn and the second one is actually you can produce a video on LinkedIn and the second one the third one is that you can actually write a post on LinkedIn and attach a picture to it and the fourth one is actually to share external content share content written by other people but you need to make sure this when you share other content you need to make sure that you write something up because you don't want to share that content without writing anything because that makes no difference all right so these are some of the ways for you to produce content on LinkedIn but now you may tell me Shui producing content on LinkedIn I do not know what to write I do not know how to shoot videos but guess what you don't need to do all this the simplest way for you to create content is actually document not create everyone says document, document. What, I, what do I mean by document content which means that all the activities that you actually go through in your life start journalizing journaling the, all this experience that you have for example you can share about what you have learned in class today you can share about what you have learned throughout all these events that you have participated share some of the learning points and create value these do not need you not, do not need to produce all this content by uh, by thinking about it but all these contents actually are experiences in your life and whenever you go through certain experience share a picture of it for example right now you can just share a picture of you attending this workshop and share some of the key lessons that you have learned from this workshop and when you're able to do that you'll be able to create value for other people and people will start realizing you people will start noticing you and guess what when you become the author in your field you now have the authority right 
Mm. So how do you decide which restaurant to go to when you have an important event? What do you think? For example, when your friend's birthday, how do you know which restaurant to go to? A lot of times we do online research, right? And one of the most powerful ways, how do you know which restaurant has the best food? It's through reviews, right? So in LinkedIn, there's this powerful thing called recommendations. So imagine this, if all these different people actually recommended you, they give you a testimonial on your LinkedIn profile. When employers actually click into that LinkedIn profile, they will actually trust that you are someone trustworthy just because of all these recommendations. So imagine this, if you are able to do this just among your friends, exchange testimonials, exchange recommendations among your friends, you will have more than 10 to 20 reviews. And guess what? When employers see that, it actually increases your, their trust to you, right? So these are the three P's for you to create a powerful personal brand. And let us do a recap again. What was the first P? Again? Presence. Presence. What's the second P? People. People. What's the third P? Positioning. Positioning. With this three P, you can actually create a powerful personal brand for yourself. And once you're able to create this powerful personal brand for yourself, you now have the authority to ask for more and people will see you as the, in, as the expert in your industry. People will see you as the doctor in the industry.